Hi everyone, it's Christy Hickey with Magic Mix and we are doing fluid art today. Yay! Got a couple of fun things for us to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, um, it's going to bring the kid out in you and it's good for kids of all ages. I uh, wish I had thought about this when the grandchildren were here. We would have a lot of fun. But I'd like to um, share some good news, wonderful news. I will be the featured artist at the Island Art Association, our gallery here in Fernandina. Come February, I'm very honored and excited and a little nervous <laughs> about this. So keep your fingers crossed. Everything goes according to plans. And um, if not, We'll just go right through it, right? So, also, come February, on the 1st, the 8th, and the 15th of that month, there, it's on a Friday, I will be teaching fluid art there from 9.30 to 12. So, if you've wanted to do this, wanted to try it, or um, learn a different technique, sign up. Okay, let me know. Um, you can get in touch with me through Facebook Magic Mix or my website. I will also do some advertising. I uh, just um, finalized these dates yesterday. So I've not put anything together for advertising, and y'all are the first to know. Yay! A um, couple of things we're going to do here because they're short and sweet. Um, at least the first one is. I don't know about the second one. Um, you'll need a tray. Okay. And let's see. Where is it? Oh, it's here. You can, you can do this <clears throat> technique on several different substrates. It just depends on what you would like to do. This is a little 8 by 10 canvas that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And they have some really cute little um, size canvases. And then I thought for versatility, we would use some watercolor paper. And these can be made into cards. So if you like to do your hand by hand cards this would be a really wonderful little craft for you and for kids like i said it's a good good deal for all kids of all ages so and i thought when i was thinking about doing this craft i was like i know i have some watercolor paper somewhere where is it you know i haven't seen it in a long time so I went into the closet, yes, the closet, and uh, dug around till I found it. And I haven't, I wanted to experiment with um, watercolors a long time ago. And I came across a couple of things that I had done way back then. And I was like, wow, that's not too bad. I'm going to share it. This is one of them. I thought that was cute. This was actually a picture on a um, napkin. And this, this was one of their studies that you did. And uh, I thought, well, that's not too bad. So I might just uh, start dabbling in watercolor again. Right? Learn something new. And that's what hopefully we're going to do today. All right, let's put this aside, and you'll need some shaving cream. Yep, that. And you can use either your craft paints, or you can use inks. I have the craft paint handy, so that's what we're going to use today. Move this stuff over here, and turn the camera down. There we go. Now, this tray, 
I'm not sure what size it is, but it's going to be large enough to do both of these at the same time. And you want to put a good coating of the shaving cream on the bottom. Smells wonderful. Okay, and take something to smooth it out. It does. This stuff smells really nice. I just want it somewhat even. We have a beautiful day here. Sun's come out. Heard a few birds this morning. I think it's supposed to get to like 67 today. It was really nice. So now that we have all of this even, we are going to just drip paint and the more I learned, I did a little experiment a while ago. The more paint you have on here, the better it is. Uh, you can do this, and uh, there's a fluid art technique that is similar to this, but it doesn't use the shaving cream. All right, let's see. Let's go with some orange. Hey, Kim, good to see you. I haven't been into it very long here. This uh, tray is covered with shaving cream, and your grandkids would love doing this. You would love doing this too. I mean, you could just get as creative as you wanted to with it. So I'm gonna pull out some more colors here. It's such a beautiful day here. People, I hope, are outside enjoying the day. It's going to be Mardi Gras in Mobile soon, isn't it? That's what I could have done. Kind of looks like a Mardi Gras king cake colors. Could go with some green in here. Make up Mardi Gras colors. Like I said, the more paint you have on here, the better more colors, more designs. Splish and splash. Hey, Pamela. Pamela says hi from Kansas. We're saying hi from Florida and Alabama. Where else is everybody from? I'm going to pull out the green. Let's do some Mardi Gras colors. That is thick. It's been sitting for a while. I'll tell you what, we'll use this one. This is um, spring green. And because it's in this bottle here it does have silicone in it so that might be a little interesting we're just going to splash it everywhere it's looking pretty love all these colors okay now this um <clears throat> 
watercolor paper is pretty wide, so I'm going to fold it in half and cut it. And if you, you know, if you do this, you can, like I say, make it your own and um, do the size that you want to. But I want to show you two projects, so I'm going to cut this down to size. It'll fit a little bit better. Now, we're just going to simply lay this on top and mash it down, wiggle it a little bit, make sure you have all the air out. And this is our canvas. It's an 8 by 10. We're going to put on this side here, mash it down. And sometimes you just need something really simple that you're not concerned about how it's going to turn out. You know, just just something to play with to get the creative juices going. All right. I think that's been there for long enough. And I'm going to pick this one up. Hopefully we have something really pretty under here. Ooh. Yummy, right? Okay, I'm going to let this sit. So I really would like for the color to soak into the paper, the watercolor paper. Now, we have a lot left over here. Let's pick this one up. <laughs> it's got quite a bit of suction. Isn't that pretty? Hey, Sherry. Oh, I love that. I love the colors. Let's see. Well, we have quite a bit of paint in here. So, put this over here on this side. While we're giving that a few minutes to soak into the paper, I have a couple of balloons here. Hey, Chrissy. Really appreciate y'all tuning in today. These balloons we're going to use on our next little project, but I've got an idea. I'm going to dip this balloon into the paint and then put it on this paper. I want to see what it does. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, so it does transfer over quite nicely. The more paint you have on it, the better it is. You can twist it. Now it's starting to turn into mud. Let's get some fresh color. Oops, it is slippery too. <laughs> okay. That was fun. All right, let's clean this one off. And we'll pick a place that doesn't have any paint on it. And here we go. We're going to scrape the shaving cream off. 
I'm going to try to get it back in here. Hmm. It's quite different. The design that's underneath the shaving cream is quite different than what we have here. I'm just wondering. Here we go. It's still pretty. Ah! It is slippery. <laughs> it is very slippery. So, this is what we have. Now, like I said in the beginning, we'd really need to try and just flatten that out. We'd really need to put a lot of paint if you want all of your paper covered in paint. Or not, you know, just depends on what you what you want at the time. So let's do this one. Let's see how this turns out. Make a real pretty background for something. Now, once the um, paint dries, you could wash this shaving cream off. Yeah, make a really good abstract painting and a good background for something. Some real pretty flowers would be looking real cute in there. All right, well, let's put this to the side and um, we'll get on to the other little crap or fluid art thing here. We'll put these on the drying table. I'll be right back. Okay, we have an 8 by 24 canvas. And we're going to use the balloons. This is um, going over real big on YouTube right now. Several artists are doing balloon smashing, and it looks so much fun. I've not done it. This is going to be the first time, so we're going to learn together on this. And I'm going to put a white background down. You can put any color you want to. This is the Apple Barrel Craft White with 50% Floetrol in it. And we're going to use this as our base. I hope some of y'all will be able to make it to the Fluid Art Convention in Orlando. I know it's quite a ways off, but there's a lot of people signing up. It will be next August, the 30th, through September 2nd, and it's 13 instructors.
43 different types of classes. There was something on. There will be um, fluid art taught, also some lectures on different types of things, subjects, computers. Um, trying to remember what the lectures were. But if you're interested, go to Pouring Artist, that's plural, dot com. Look up, there's um, a picture of each of the artists there, along with the classes that they're going to be teaching, and a description of the class. So you can go for all four days, or just a couple, or one. There's also a link to the hotel where um, the lady that put all this together, Pam Smith, she um, got us a good deal on a on the hotel there. So hopefully there's still space. Get you a discount on the room. Okay, this is all covered. Put that there. And I've seen this done a couple different ways. And I thought what I would do is do a couple different ways. So that way we can see what each technique does. Um, there are some artists I've seen do like a puddle pour. And I'm going to try to make some sort of floral design, kind of like a vine with um, big flowers and little flowers and some vines and leaves. So that's, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And I'm going to pour a little puddle here. And the flowers that I've seen kind of look like um, morning glories. Really very, very pretty. I'd like to have some pink. Now these paints that are in the cups have been mixed with Floetrol. Some do have silicone in them, some don't. And I usually write on the lid. But I didn't write on the lid. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go with a little bit of yellow in here. All right, let's see what that does. We're going to take our balloon. And these are little water balloons. It's got something on it. And we're going to just dip directly into the paint and pull it back out and start. Let's see. Okay. So there's still paint on the balloon. I'm not going to wipe it off. I want to see what it does. It's not looking muddy. Hey, Racy. Good to see you. So that's what it looks like. Not a whole lot of um, not a whole lot of color. We'll see what it does though. Let's 
So, let's see, I need a paper towel. I'm gonna wipe this off. I'm mashing and this time I'm going to turn it a little bit so it kind of muddled the, the colors together I bet that would be pretty blown let's see if I have the straw handy Here we go. Hmm. Okay. So let's do. Let's do a different technique. All right, this one we're going to put the paint on the side. Mostly pink this time. And the purple in the middle. Touch of yellow. Clean this balloon off pretty good. Hey Rose, I hope you're feeling better. Well, that's what we have. So, hmm. It's really pretty. Really pretty on the balloon. Try it one more time. Hopefully the colors won't get too muddy. Okay, that's our pink. <laughs> I just, I think I just put my paint all over my face. I'm going to scatter these out. Nope. Okay. Put a little bit more paint on here. Yeah, if y'all like today's program, thanks, Sherry. Um, please share with your friends and family. Spread the word. Hmm. Let's not be doing something right here. Mash, and I'm going to turn it a little bit. That's not bad. We'll clean it. Going straight down. 
mashing pretty hard, bringing it up. We'll mash over here pretty hard. Now see, that time it didn't do anything. I must not have had enough paint on the balloon. Let's try a light touch. Nope. So, it needs more paint. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that, Rose. Oh, you got a lot of people counting on you over there. Hmm. Interesting. I want to get these pink and purple flowers scattered throughout and then we'll run some vines and think going to put another purple blob here seems like that was the best technique And a lot of times fluid art is abstract, it's um, impressionism, I guess. You know, everybody has their own interpretation as to what they see. Let's see, that does better than that over there. And we got half of a flower. Let's see. Requires quite a bit of paint, though. Let's go back up here. Might end up blowing some of these out with the straw. Kind of a half flower. It's really pretty on the balloon. Beautiful colors. Let's see, I think we're going to need a couple more larger flowers. I'll do one down here. Give it some balance. And clean balloon. It didn't stay big very long, did it? <laughs> Good. Okay. I'm going to blow this one. Let's put these wet balloons to the side for a minute.
Okay, so we have a nice size flower there. One there. And let's do one here. Let that set for a minute. I'm not through with him yet. So well, this is going to be the tricky part to control the amount of paint coming out of this because I'd like to have a vine and. Let's see. I think maybe I'll do some leaves first. And this is just the beginning, so we will play with that a little bit. I have a darker green. going to put a little dab in the middle. And I'm going to use the palette knife for my swipe to see how it works first. And I might end up going with the card and Let's see, try to get comfortable here. I'm going to take it and swish it over this way and then back that way and down the middle. Let's see what we get. Wasn't really enough dark green in there. So I'm just kind of like mixing the colors, the greens together. I 
You could blow them. That would be really pretty too. You know, like I said, it's just an impression. This doesn't have to be an exact replica of a leaf. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but that's what I'm not going for that. I just want to give an indication of that's what, I, what it is. And give it a little bit of curly cues in there. So I think what we're going to do here with this metal one, I'm going to put a little bit of white in the center and pop a little bit of yellow in there. Of yellow. I'll let that settle for a minute. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing here is just drawing some leaves and playing with it to um, get that I'm a vine. Look to it. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me today. And spread the word. I'm going to start teaching fluid art at the Island Art Association downtown Fernandina. And if you're interested, let me know. Starting February 1st, and it's on February 1st, 8th, and the 15th. They're all Fridays from 9.30 to 12. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to learn different techniques, the wave. Um, we're going to do some flowers. What else? Some string pulls. So it'll um it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, Bonnie's joined us. Kelly, Rosemary, Susan, thank you all. Thank you all very much for tuning in. So get you some balloons. Try your hand at this uh, flower technique with the balloon. I've also seen some abstract with um, different colors, and they just keep smashing the balloon on the canvas really gorgeous colors and um, designs so i'm going to finish this up
and I'll take a picture of it probably tomorrow morning after it's had time to set and I'll show you the finished product. I'll be putting some more flowers probably, vines and leaves, maybe a butterfly or two. Who knows? It's a really springy day here. It's nice. So thank you all for joining today. Hugs to everybody. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.